So old mate came over to tell us that he might hit our caravan and he apologises. Oh God, mate, we're not at Royal Melbourne. Have a look. I've had the best morning. Oh, that's good. To have. Doing well on the puzzle, sweetheart. <laughs> and you haven't I've, even had my help. I've had the best morning. Oh, that's good. I have. Seriously. What well, we got out of bed about 9.30 or something. We'll tell the viewers where we are. Oh where we are. This is this is our view. It's a nice bush bush country. This is Kalgoorlie 72 hour rest stop. And it's so good. We'll, we'll take you outside in a minute, but we pulled in here about, I don't know, five o'clock last night and um, just pulled up against the logs here. We're finally out of the Pilbara, as you know. We're now in the gold fields area of Kalgoorlie. So we've been in the Pilbara for about five days, I reckon. And tough going in the Pilbara. Very tough going. God, it's, it's a harsh country out there. I still shower and red dirt comes off me from God knows where. But anyway, we got here about five o'clock yesterday and <laughs> we um, pulled up, set up, unhitched and then left Kui in here because she had a hard drive yesterday. And the Misto and I went out to Kalgoorlie Hotel for dinner and had the best meals ever. Oh, how good were they? I know, I know. Last night, it literally just bucketed down like no tomorrow and the roads are flooded and we'd just gone through the Pilbara and you would have seen some footage of us like doing a little few water crossings on yeah. the highway because water was just coming out of the road. Seriously, we're that close to getting stuck there. Yeah, and then you come to Kalgoorlie and all the streets are flooded. Yeah. Like, just driving home from dinner. The rain was out of control, mm. but it was so peaceful here last night. We had the best sleep we've had for a long time. That's it. Because it wasn't stinking hot and sticky and... Yeah. Um, yeah, it, just it was just really good. The windows opened a bit, we had a nice cool breeze come through. When I woke up this morning, it was only 15 degrees here this morning, and I was like, yeah. it's been a long time since we've got under 20. I'm but actually cold. Yeah, like well, I'm... I put trackies on this morning and yeah. a hoodie, and it was good. Today's itinerary? itinerary was to, first and foremost, try to get this spare tyre, no. because all the way from Marble Bar down to here, Kalgoorlie, we have tried everywhere, Newman, Karatha, Karatha um, yeah, so many places, and no one had a BF Goodrich 26565 R18, all terrain. So the um, issue is the R18, so the size, yeah. the alloy size. Yeah, yeah. so size of the wheel, um, and also a lot of companies are sort of steering clear of the BF Goodrich, apparently they're getting too, too expensive. So I've tried everywhere, and I've finally come here and went to one place and rung around about four or five. A lot of people just didn't even answer the phone. Yeah. It's a Saturday, so they're open between eight and 12. And uh, finally just pulled into Bridgestone and they were so nice and helpful. Um, she suggested, I was just gonna get us like a, just a spare, just to get us across the Nullarbor. And then when I get home, I could order a beef good rich and just change it over. Um, but she got me onto the Maxis um, AT, 811s and uh, they've actually got a higher load rating than the BF Goodrich so my plan of attack is and they're cheaper it was 485 um, so my plan of attack is to leave that as a spare and once I wear out the BF Goodrich then I'll change to Maxis. Does it look good? Yeah. On it's the a, tire on the wheel? Yeah it's a yeah. nice looking tire. Yeah. Um, so peace of mind Oh my God, we have driven so many kilometres without a spare tyre and it's in the back of your mind the whole way. Like, I don't advise doing it, but we didn't have much of a choice. Ideally, on our new caravan, we're going to have the same stud pattern right around the car and the van. So when you come up against those situations, at least you've got a van spare wheel that you can use. You can yeah. throw on just to get yourself out of trouble. Because with our setup, we don't 
we don't have the capacity to carry two spare wheels for the car because the one spare wheel is under the car. Yeah. And let's be honest, you can't. There's a lot of weight. It is a lot of weight, yeah. and it's not likely that you'll need it unless you're going to do these off-road tracks yeah. to get the shortcuts. And we've gone the long way around to get here because we can't do the shortcuts because we don't have the spare wheel and the roads are flooded at this yeah. time of year. So, If you get it stuck out there, you're in a world of pain for a long time. Yeah. But we've learned that if we come back, we'll take the shortcut straight to Exmouth. Like we don't need to do the coastal route again. No. And that's something to keep in mind, guys, that if you're going to do your big lap, you don't have to do that traditional lap. There's no. other ways. Like Yeah. Especially if you want to get somewhere before the tourists get there and also for the better weather. Yeah, look look outside the, the box, so yeah. to speak. Especially that northern, Great Northern Highway is probably one of the best highways I've seen. Yeah. It is so comfortable to drive on there's not much traffic yeah there's a lot of road trains um but you communicate with them and they're fine and they let you pass and they help you out and mm. no really good road and you're always going to have fuel on that highway because the mm. road trains need the fuel so that's one area that you're not going to you know put yourself in any sort of challenges so yeah to speak. so if you push for time <clears throat> and you don't really want to go right around the coastline of uh Western Australia, yeah. cut up the middle because yep. you'll save a hell of a lot of time and fuel fuel, and be happy days. But otherwise, if you've got plenty of time, go around the coast. Away. And forgot, we forgot to mention, you'll see a lot of different things like the gorges, oh, the mountain ranges. Stunning. Oh my gosh. Like the mines. Yeah, the outback. Yeah, the mines, the machinery, the, oh, the yellow goods. Oh my God. Yeah. Anyway. Crazy. Yeah, it's a different world. Yep. It's completely different to what we're used to anyway. So there you have it. <clears throat> now, next thing that we need to do is go and get the car washed, and then Laura wants to go to Kmart. To show you Cooey, because she, she's tried... Yeah, you, darling. You've tried to tuck yourself in, but you haven't really done a good job. So... Off to sleep. You've got to work out what you're going to hit, put, drop the coin in and then bolt and run around the car. Misto's eating a nice chicken and cheese toasty from the coffee van behind us. Very handy, by the way. Mm, so I'm good. just going to explain our movement. So we didn't really get to show you the campground, but Troy will drive around while I film for you. Uh, really good spot to stay at the 72-hour rest area in Kalgoorlie. We had two nights here. It's pretty late on in the day for us. It's quarter to ten and we're leaving to head to the Nullarbor. We've only got a four and a half hour drive today to one of the rest areas there, but we'll see how we go. There's going to be a heap of rain around, so it's going to be very wet, challenging conditions, and also probably some flooded roads, I imagine. Mm. And then we'll see how we feel, but any rest stops after that are just basic rest areas. They're not really 24 hour stops. So the one we're going to is the furthest on anything after that, you're looking at the Great Australian Bight um, or, or the road houses. Our battery is on 37%, so it's very low. It's been, we've had a few cloudy days, obviously. Uh, the drive will only top that up about 15%, I'd say. But yeah. How good is it along here? There's like three or four um, drinking water taps. Mm. 
so plenty of room for people to pull up and fill up <clears throat> and then the dump points just there like it's so well organized yeah so you can fill up your water do your dump point your miso can get your toasted sandwich all in the one spot how good yeah it's good if they actually hand the toasted sandwich over and not just leave it on the oven but i'm still getting over that anyway <laughs> You drive up here, that, as he said, there's three water filler points, a dump point, and heaps of bins. So you basically come out of your campsite, do everything you need to do and leave, or come in, do what you need to do, and then park up. Completely so. free. And the ranger does come around too, so... Yeah, they come around and they just check that you're doing the right thing. You don't need to register or anything. Old mate tried to bring out a generator the other day and they, she pulled him up. Yeah. We just had a bucket under our caravan. No one really said anything. I was just tipping it over the side. There's toilets over here where the information uh, block is. And then there's a nice big park to walk your dogs. So it's a really good spot. But um, as we drive around, I'll give you a little squeeze. As we mentioned yesterday, it's really safe. Uh, there was no incidents at all overnight. You get a few people driving through the park on their dirt bikes, being idiots, but they move on pretty quickly. So yeah, well, it's it's safe for now, but the time that we're here, that that could change in a month's time. Yeah, that's true. conditions here, bloody rain. It's dark. There's a lot of water around, lots of water. So, so we've just got to take it easy when the roads are greasy. That's it. This is almost downloaded and then I can put this away and I can upload it tonight with Starlink if we've got enough power. But I'm going to focus on the road now. Was fifty-seven. What was it? Thank your mother for the rabbits. Well, as you can see, it's very dark outside, and that's purely because of the the rain. Uh, it's not the latest time we've arrived to a campsite. That's been about seven o'clock in Norseman when we came the other way over the Nullarbor, but. Uh, 
it's the darkest we've arrived to a campsite. Now initially we were going to stay, we actually had a rest stop back in, uh, what was it called? Woolba, Wool but uh, that was a nice 24 hour rest stop and there was quite a few vans in there but we just uh, chilled out, Troy had a sleep, we had some lunch and then about an hour and a half later we kicked on so because we had it in us we're still driving just to crack on some of this WA Nullarbor sign so about 50 k's from Cocklebiddy and we'll find our camp spot there in the dark yeah it's been a terrible day like over, overcast all day probably the worst conditions we've had on this trip <laughs> It's been just over a 10 hour drive. We ended up driving all the way to Madura. Now when you look at the map, that's a hell of a long way. Not from Madura, Cal Victoria. Not Mildura, Madura. And it's a hell of a long way from Kalgoorlie. Anyway, the first thing we did, like we haven't even unpacked the coffee machine. First thing the misto did was get his cup out of the dishwasher. Stopped up on a bit of Captain Morgan's. Yeah. Bit of CM. Fed the girl. Put some mozzarella balls in there. They're gonna go straight on the plate with some aioli. I've got a Portello vodka. And we're gonna smash this puzzle and watch maps. Yeah, he, he likes it. Oh, I you just do. like the company. <laughs> so much the maps. And Kiwi's happy, she's happy. I'm happy that we've, we've finally settling yeah. down. Oh, so um, we're in Madura and we're actually, let me just turn the lights off. We're at, we've just parked at the back of the petrol station. So that's, that's the petrol station just there. And you just drive up the top and it's really a rest area. All right, anyway, we're going to get into this. And it should be done very, very shortly. Well, it's possible we'll probably get a knock on the door in about 20 minutes saying, what are you guys doing up here? But you know what? It's a free country. Anyway, I'm losing concentration here. I'm going to yeah. get some... I'm going to start maths. is going to be great tonight. Love a commitment ceremony. Yeah, I yeah. prefer the dinners. Ours is only six months away. I like the punch-ons in the dinners. <laughs> Perfect quick meal on the road. Exactly. Yeah, Probably not that great for you, but I'm just trying to process everything, you know. Feels like it's been a struggle of a relationship this whole Ooh. way through. Okay. All the way down into the treat box. Goodness gracious. There we go. The special treats. journey today. Just using the air fryer to keep the cupboard door closed. Good morning my love. Good morning, thank two, you. Two special treats. All right, this is camp. It is Monday morning. It's Labor Day in most places around Australia. Hold on, just get the... Wait, 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 wait. Put the 12 pin in, darling. All right, good to go. It's cleaning all the sensors. Hold on. Yep.
Yes, can do the front ones. All right, <clears throat> as I was saying, this is our campsite. That's the petrol station. So we're at Madura Roadhouse. And we just came in during the night up this road and found this spot. And just make sure nothing's stolen from the back. Yeah, it's all good. See that? So old mate came over to tell us that he might hit our caravan and he apologises. Oh god mate, we're not at Royal Melbourne, have a look. <laughs> so that's the tea there, well, right? Tea off from here. Shh. Right. And these poor people were parking there. Now we didn't see that sign last night, but the, the flag's there, the green. So he <laughs> so the filming that you'll see right now is he actually teed off, he hit this tree and it bounced onto the road. So Luckily, he didn't hit our caravan. Well, I can't believe he teed off. Like, they could have easily smashed a window. <laughs> like, we, we would have been five minutes moved out of the way. Anyway, but it was really good. There was heaps of road, um, road trains and motorhomes parked up there. And then these guys must have come in in the middle of the night or early this morning. But that's it. That's a cheap way to stay and a safe way. So we're just going to go down and get fuel. How much have we got? We've got three quarters of the tank, so... Well, we'll yeah. fill up here and then we don't have to stop at the border. Right. And it'll be cheaper. Bit of a late start again. It's ten past nine today. But we had a late night. It was... We, we smashed through the puzzle. Had a few drinks. It took us till quarter past one. But it was fun. Oh, this is Shell, is it? There you go. It's actually a Shell Roadhouse. Whoa. And he says to me, don't go through the potholes. Another thing is, if the weather's like this, or you gotta do all the jobs or unhitch and all that, What's the point of having a shower in the morning? Seriously. <laughs> oh well. It is what it is. We're only getting a quarter of a tank. It is filling up with caravans here. Everyone is starting to head west now that we're in autumn. All the uh, Victorians and the Tasmanians. How much, how much busier is it can, from <clears throat> when we first exactly come? From when we left off. Mm. Right. Very busy. There you go. That's the Euclid petrol station. Fuel was how much? Two fifty. Two fifty-five. I think it was. Yeah, so we're stopped here. We've just got to sort out our veggies. We don't have any fruit on board. Um, I've got to top and tail these onions, which is a bit annoying, but it's better than throwing out the whole bag. I'm smashing, smashing up some chilli. Oh yeah. A good wrap down. It'd be better with salad in it, but the salad went off. Mm. It's doing case. <laughs> it's your breakfast time too. Alright, there you go. We've 
got no fruit or veggies. Perfect. And that was easy. I'm gonna make a sandwich, though. I'm gonna make a chicken loaf sandwich. Hey gun. Hi, good. 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 Thank you. Good. 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 Um so obviously coming from Western Australia. Okay. Yeah. yeah, no worries. We no. just hit the quarantine station okay. we have a fruit, veg and plant material. Yeah, no worries. If I can look in the back of your car in the carrot. Yeah, no drama. Yeah. Oh Thank hold you. the dog. Mm. Alright, today's been a bit about uh, just general maintenance really with bunkered down here at our, on our land in Sejuna <clears throat> and I'm just going right over the caravan and making sure everything's tightened up and uh, noticed a few solar panels were a little bit loose so I put some new screws in there um, and just give it a, a general going over to make just to make sure after all those corrugations that we're not going to lose anything or something's going to break so <clears throat> definitely um, prevention is the way to go uh, the other thing I'm doing is I'm testing out our new FlexiMate water tank that I purchased and it's I, so far I think it's going to be awesome because I didn't really want to hitch the van up we've literally just ran out of water I didn't want to hitch the van up and then drive right into town there's a little free water point into town in uh, Sejuna that we can go and fill up this water bladder with and uh, that's what I'm about to go and do it's 110 litres from FlexiMate and um, I just basically looked around at what was the best sort of quality and looked at reviews and um, these guys seem to have a pretty good uh, range of products so uh, I decided to go with that I think it was a hundred it's a hundred and ten litre water tank but it's it uh, I think it was about two hundred thirty dollars plus delivery so we had that flown into Bustleton uh, when I went to meet family there and it's the first time that we're using it now um, I anticipated with, that we'd use it, you know, maybe at Ningaloo Station um, around that area, but because the cyclone came in, we had to evacuate that area, so we didn't get to really uh, test it out. So here we go. You can see how it is. It's a beautiful evening. It's a little bit windy as usual. Um, but yeah, we've just been tidying up, getting groceries. The car's booked in for a service tomorrow. Uh, for its 50,000 kilometer service uh, it's also got a recall on it um, and I'm not 100% sure what that recall is but we'll find out tomorrow we're going to pop into the dealer tomorrow and get this sorted out and there's a little bit of car maintenance that I need to do as well we we um, lost a bit of our bull under undercarriage of our bull bar come loose um, up through Tom Price there with the corrugation so We'll go and get I'll, I'll bolt that back on that's no no big deal um, but yeah it's a good indication to to make sure you you lock tight things especially those the corrugations so I don't care how well your cars built or how well your caravans built your things are gonna break so you just got to keep on top of it and just keep checking things keep having an eagle eye over your van when you pull up to side or your car and just to make sure that it's it's um, all legit because otherwise it can turn into a real nightmare very quickly. Anyway, we'll pull into town and see what's happening down there. How good is this for a, for a free service? Pull in, caravan, water. Bang. You get the right connection. Okay, 
so you've got to you basically have to uh, use your smartphone scan the code log in maybe you do have to pay for it all right let's have a look Alright, well it wouldn't connect me, so I've got to go find some water somewhere else. Yeah, you've got to scan your, scan your phone, but it's not connecting, unfortunately, so we move on and we try to find somewhere else. Bit of a bugger. Alright, I managed to get some water just in town. Um, just at one of those toilet block facilities, they had a, had a tap there, so it's not for drinking anyway, it's just for more showering and stuff. But there you go, in the... I didn't fill it right up. Um, just because we don't need that much, so... I figured I'll just fill it up, maybe 100 litres. And we uh, should be all good to go. Now what I'll do is I'll pump it directly back into the tank, so I'll show you how I do that. He's back. Well, I was wondering if he got lost in our hometown. Our second hometown. But no, he's come back with the goods and I actually never thought this bladder would ever get used because we had Probably enough because we had enough water in our tanks. It's just a few little teething issues, but Great Aussie are going to fix this for us when we get home eventually. Well it is fixed. No, the whole tank thing. Yeah. I wanna let the flies in, darling, so can you hurry up? So what's the plan, Dal? Tell me what you're doing. Uh, I've got to get the pump out. I have oh. to pump it from there into the into there. Just okay. another day at the office. Well, I might just give you the GoPro because <coughs> flies the next level. Yeah, um, I'm pretty busy up here. God, piss off, flies. All right, most of you have seen this set up before, but it's a little 12 volt inline pump. I'm gonna run that to our cigarette lighter out the, on this side of the van. It's a bit annoying being on this side of the van because I don't have a long enough lead. Magic's happening. Oh no, it's a bit of a Abomination at the moment, there's hoses everywhere and all that sort of stuff, but I'll get a better system happening. And what I'll do is I'll undo this one because it acts as like a bit of a breather. Like so. going in so there you have it that should tie us over for a couple of days 100 litres and then we'll get the car serviced and we're on our way I'll tell you what the flies are bloody friendly time for a jar got so much red dirt from the from the Pilbara Hello, ladies. Let's take a look at her lantern. Alright, we're good. What have we got on tonight? <laughs> it's been ages since we've done a cooking segment. Uh, we've just been on the road for oh, a while now and we've been free camping for a while now. So we haven't had the conditions to be able to, one, cook outside. Mm. The flies are out of control. And we crossed the border, so we weren't able to buy fruit and veggies. Yeah, that was So we had a little a bit of a one. tricky situation. As you know, we're in Sejuna, back on our land. 
our land. Thankfully, because <laughs> every single caravan park is chock-a-block booked out. We, we couldn't even get in there if we wanted to. Yes, which is a bit of a bummer because we had a power situation this morning, but <clears throat> um, that is rectifying itself with the solar. Mm. Anyway, we went into town this morning, went for a little walk, and we went and saw the, the guys at Sajuna Meats where we went last time and got the beef skirt, which you might have seen us cook on the Great Australian Bite. So I thought it was fitting to use uh, their stubby holder he tonight. He actually asked how that beef skirt was, and I said, mate, that was bloody amazing. It was and he so goes, good. I watched the episode, and <laughs> it looked good. Yeah. It was beautiful. Very good meats down there. They're um, such a nice bunch of guys in there, so yep. thank you to them. And this is the level of service that they actually go to. So we walked in there and there was no diced lamb uh, on display. So we just asked them, do you have any lamb? And then I asked whether they had it marinated and they didn't, but they had a mint and rosemary, kind of mint jelly rosemary mint mix. That smells so good. Yeah, that they went and diced the lamb for us straight off the cow. Mm. Uh, sorry, straight off the sheep. Do you know what you what, <laughs> I know, what am I, what, what are animals? Are you talking about? We're having lamb, okay. So. You didn't realise you have a farm. <laughs> I know. They went and got the meat straight off the lamb, diced it up, and then marinated it into it with their beautiful mix. The lamb wasn't in the paddock, by the way, either. No, it wasn't. <laughs> um, we got a kilo of meat, so that's what it looks like. We're only using half a kilo tonight, and we'll use the other half. Uh, later on in the trip mm. but what we're going to make tonight and it's pretty obvious by our little array of display here have a look at these little beauties where'd you get them from king billy <laughs> got these off instagram I said, that's a bloody great idea yeah he actually got us three but i've just got two out one for you put your off sh tonight what are you what are they called shish, shazlik. Sh shish kebabs no shazlik's, shazlik's. you sure well you asked the viewers will let you know Shazlik's, shish kebabs, yeah. skewers. Yeah. I mean, there's so many different ways you can call them. Kebabs. Some people call them kebabs. Yeah. So lamb, lamb skewers. But look, how good's that? So you you cook it on here and then just <whistles> straight onto the plate. Beautiful. So yeah, I like that idea. Thanks, King Billy. You've come yep. up with the goods once again. Exactly. So what are we putting on these All right. skewers, babe? So we've obviously got the lamb. Smells amazing. <laughs> I wish you guys could smell it because it smells beautiful. We've got your, your brown onion and we'll, uh, we'll slice that up into, into chunks. Array of capsicums, green, yellow and red. And the other winner to the dish is halloumi. Secret ingredient. Yeah, so I think these are the two winners of the dish, obviously. Capsicums are alright and onions are alright, but um, once you fry this this stuff up, it is neat. part putting the chassis on there's no real rhyme or reason how you do it just just put them on look at that by the way how good does that look <clears throat> it's all in the prep isn't it it's all preparation based yep just a bit of color it's a really good thing to do with your kids as well give them this job
salt and seasoning. Oh, look at the sunset. Oh, I don't have shoes on. Oh no, the barbie's gone out. Oh gosh. That is not a good start. And it's not going to be hot. It's windy here, as you can tell. We're pretty amateurs at this, uh, <laughs> this cooking segment. This is why we haven't done a cooking segment in a while. Back inside. We've forgotten how to do one. <laughs> Let me heat the barbie up more. We'll be back to it. <laughs> uh. What do you think, Koo? Do you think they look good? Good job, boys. Good job. Let's try this again. <laughs> That's what I like to see in here. Even the cocoa's come out. The cooey. That is going to be Mickey Mouse. What do you reckon? I'll take the hook. I reckon 15. 20 minutes. Oh, that's lovely. <laughs> I'm cooking dinner and she's doing a dump right next to it. Come on, Coco, have some decorum. <laughs> she's just enjoying the view. Good girl. See, mummy and daddy don't need to pick up that one. It's fertilizing the land. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, okay. Hang on a sec. Say hi to YouTube, King. Hi there. <laughs> Grand Snippers. Have a look at that view. Oh, yeah, it's good, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, thanks Bill. You, Talk to you later. Let me tell you, it is pretty good. <laughs> Firstly, the car's been serviced, retuned, automatic transmission, recall fixed, $375, cap price servicing, all done. They fixed our mud flap and our bash plate. <clears throat> we must have had a better, a different deal, a different um, 
person. Salesperson. Yeah, salesperson yeah. than last time. So that was really good experience. So thank you, Sajuna Toyota. Yeah, and for the loan car. Now, yeah. we're coming to Sajuna Sailing Club. We haven't been here before. We didn't know you can eat here. Apparently they do meals three nights a week. So luckily, it's Wednesday. And it looks busy. Yeah, Hopefully there's a lot of cars did you here. book? Yeah. You didn't book? This is a Melbourne. Oh. Got a little takeaway, I see, darling. Caught in the act. You're stitching me up Caught again. Caught in the act. Stitching me right up. Just another that's pepper jack. probably one of the, the only places you can get takeaway from. Yeah, that's true. In Sojourner. Without having to show your license. Yeah, not, well, I didn't have to, so I'm not sure what the ruling is behind that, but I was wrapped that I could get a bottle of wine, have a glass for dinner, and then go back and have a glass with mm -hmm. the miso. And watch maps. No. How, how calm is it, Dal? Look at this. We have never been in Sejuna and it's this calm. Tides out. But it's very peaceful. I'll tell you what, there's no fish or squid at that jetty. Well, they're, <laughs> not, they're not there when we're there. Put no. It <laughs> there's blue swimmers. There's plenty of ink on the jetty. I reckon they just put that on there. <laughs> That's good. Anyway, we better go back to the coup. All right, goodbye, Sajuna. Good morning. From the land of the love. <laughs> oh, it's always sad to leave this place because I oh, just, we love it. It's mm. really nice. Such a beautiful view to wake up to, beautiful sunset, beautiful sunrise. Um, yeah, so unfortunately today we have to make a move. And uh, where are we off to, darling? Spear Creek. So Spear Creek's just east of Port Augusta when going this way. Uh, it, it's on the boundary of the Flinders Ranges, so we should have some nice country feels to it. Country bush fields. A couple of nights, so it should be good. Yeah. Though it's a five and a half hour drive, so. It is. What's the time? 8 20. Alright, I'm gonna film you driving out. The last of our land. I'm not sure when we'll be back here. Who knows? Got some work to do. such a beautiful spot. I can't wait to do some good fun things to this place. We're trying to come up with some plans as you do when the travel's over or to keep the travel going. <laughs> the fly swatter. <laughs> Followed you. Out. Out. I don't want to leave. No, I'm the I want to do things. Oh well, it's going to have to come back. Mm -hmm.